This short video is going to take you through uh, a few key concepts to do with algorithm design. So we're going to look at what structured English is and some of the programming constructs and it's been aware of these to go forward into the next lessons next week. Algorithms we know from before what we did in class an algorithm is a sequence of instructions designed for a specific task let's say going back to algorithm algorithm a sequence of instructions designed to solve a specific task and the important thing an algorithm is independent of a programming language this makes it different to a program we may develop a program in a programming language such as Python when we did the Raspberry Pis or Visual Basic which you'll do soon a program is written in a programming language an algorithm is not now we've got two ways that we can represent an algorithm and these started to get looked at in lessons last week one approach is structured English this is where statements would usually begin with a verb so you might have instructions or more commands that might say get number put number add number one to number two subtract number three from the total put total out onto the screen output so that's a series of commands statements in structured English usually say begin with a verb they're less mathematical symbols so we use more words um, to represent these it's very restrictive the preferred approach is pseudocode pseudocode is the main language for expressing an algorithm it's very similar to real code but we don't have to worry about the syntax the syntax are the exact spelling and grammar of the language again pseudocode is independent of any real programming language here are some examples if we look at the structured English we've got words multiply number one by number two to get product input number input number two add number to number two to get some output some if score is greater than 70 then set grade to merit repeat until x equals 10 so we've got command words going on here that's structured English and here is the pseudocode equivalent we use an arrow to mean put inside put in, or preferably assigned this therefore is saying number one times number two is assigned to a variable product and we've got that keyword there assignment assignment really means that the result of a calculation is placed into something with that arrow there representing assignment sequence means that each instruction follows the next so it goes into some kind of sequence so this sequence it follows through it's got an input number input number two and sum is assigned number plus number two and then sum is output so we've got four lines of code that are in sequence sequence each instruction follows the next input number input number two number plus number two is assigned to sum and we output the sum most code is in sequence it starts at the top and it works its way down if we take into consideration instructions that you may have followed before take into consideration Lego you don't start at the end you don't jump around you start at the beginning and you work your way through if you're doing a cooking recipe you start at the beginning and you work your way through you wouldn't ice your cake before you've broken your eggs into the flour so there is a certain sequence selection is another structured programming approach selection is the use of what's called if statements it brings a decision into our programming an example of the decision here if score is greater than 70 then the grade is assigned merit you could say in real life speaking terms if it's raining 
I'll put up an umbrella. If it's cold, I'll wear a coat. If it's windy, I might wear a scarf. If the weather is sunny and it is cold, then I might wear a light jacket. If money in my pocket is more than five pound, then I might treat myself to a takeaway. So these are examples of if statements and that is selection. It could be if else because you might say um, in the terms of this example here if your grade is less than 20 then failed else if the grade is greater than 20 but less than 30 then you might have a pass so you're given decisions that might take place so that is known as selection one of the other types of constructs is iteration to iterate means to repeat you often hear people saying I'm going to reiterate this point so I'm going to re-say this point I'm going to tell you it again and what we've got here is saying we're going to repeat everything that's indented until a certain condition so we're going to ask the user to enter a number we're going to assign x to x plus that number and then we're going to carry on doing this until x equals 10 so we could go round this we could enter 2 x will have 0 in it the first time round 0 plus 2 is assigned to 2 is x equals 10? No. Let's input another number. Input 6. 2 plus 6 equals 8. So 8 is now in place inside x. Is x equals 10? No. Input another number. I'm going to input 2. 8 plus 2 equals 10. 10 is now assigned to x. And we've reached this point. 10 equals 10. So we come out of this loop. That therefore is an example of iteration. It's repeating that code. So those programming constructs, the main ones there are sequence, selection and iteration. Another example of sequence, two numbers being input, both being added together and assigned to sum. The sum is divided by two and the result of that is assigned to average and we're outputting the average. So that is a piece of code to work out the average of two numbers. Example of selection, input one number, input a second number. If num1 is bigger than num2, then output num1 is bigger than num2. Else, output num2 is biggest. These are all examples of pseudocode. Pseudocode is the best approach to use when planning code. And here's another example of iteration. This time, instead of being loop until, we've got a while so input x while x is less than 5 do the following so if I entered 2 2 is less than 5 so I'm going to output 2 x now equals 2 plus 1 which is 3 let's loop 3 is less than 5 let's output 3 x equals 3 plus 1 to give us 4 4 is less than 5 so we'll output 4 x equals 4 plus 1 so x is now 5, 5 is no longer less than 5, so we jump to the next piece of code in sequence, which in this, there isn't any. There's another example of iteration, this is very similar to the first example we looked at earlier on in this video, and this is going to repeat a process, adding a number until y is greater than 6. And I've mentioned variables a lot. So the term variable is used to represent a memory location. Variables are used to store an item of data such as a number or a character. It's something that we are interested in storing. Variables need an identifier. An identifier is just a name that's given to the variable. It's how it's identified such as my identifier is Darren that's how I'm identified and variables need an identifier so this is just a name values of variables can vary they can change so that is a key 
aspects of variable it can change in the case of this example here the variables will be number one because that is going to hold a number number two sum and average there are four variables within this program in summary then in this video we've looked at algorithm design we looked at structured English pseudocode and we looked at four main constructs assignment sequence selection and iteration